Okay, so now we're going to have a look at planes and axes. Okay, um, we have to start with, um, we need to understand the definitions of the planes and definitions of the axis. We need to then try and remember which ones generally go together. Okay, so that's the Sophie takes Fleur shopping to London. Sophie takes Fleur shopping to London. Or Sophie or Simon takes Fred shopping to London. Okay, whatever, you know, um, way you can remember the best. The last one is we have to think about the examples. We need to be able to apply this knowledge to different examples or different pictures, okay? That's how the exam questions are gonna come up. I'm now just gonna take you through, okay, how to, how to go about remembering it. Um, okay, so first of all, the, uh, you guys need to understand that the definitions of all of these, what I've done is I've, I've put these as a, a green square is the plane and a red line is the axis. Okay, so normally this, the S stands for, a, a plane starting with S is sagittal, okay, sagittal plane, okay, and S um, stands for side on as well. So it's the, the sagittal plane is when you're looking at something from side on. Quick example, gymnast, that picture of, is from side on, so we're having a look at the movement that, that's occurring in the sagittal plane, okay. Now generally, the movement happening in a, a sagittal plane, for example, the gymnast, will also be occurring in um, a, around the transverse axis. So imagine there's a rod going through from the left side of the body to the right side of the body, okay, and that is the transverse axis. Okay, so here is transverse. And then the next plane that we have is F for frontal, so that's a frontal plane. And the axis, okay, so that's a plane and that's the red's an axis. The axis, in the frontal plane, you normally have movements happening. Uh, if it's frontal plane, you normally have movements, for example, the um, cartwheel. Okay, you'd normally have, so therefore the, the axis for the cartwheel would be going again from front to back. Okay, so that's an axis going through the body from front to back. Okay, that would be the sagittal axis. Okay, sagittal. Um, and then the next one you have two London, so two stands for transverse, it's a transverse plane. That's from above, and the L stands for longitudinal. 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 Not vertical, okay, which some of you were actually saying. So it's longitudinal. Okay, so that's why this is very important, okay? So you need to, uh, when it comes to your uh, revision card that you're going to do after this session, okay, I want you to write down the definition for each of those. So a sagittal plane is a plane that divides the body into left and right parts. Okay, so it's like a big plane that cuts the body down in the middle. Okay, the uh, frontal plane divides the body into front and back parts. And the transverse plane divides the body into top and bottom parts. Okay, the axis, you've got the transverse axis, that um, goes through the body horizontally from left to right. The sagittal axis goes through the body uh, horizontally from front to back. And the longitudinal axis goes vertically through the body, okay, from to, uh, your head to your feet. Okay, so that looks at rotations. Right. Um, now, I'll show you a quick example now then of um, how these can work, how this applies. The reason why I say that generally these go together, okay, is... Uh, you've got the example of, I can just show you actually, um, a sprinter. Okay, the sprinter is in that kind of position there, right? As you can see, the plane, you should know the plane of that by now that we're looking at, it's from side on. So if it's side on, okay, right, it's the sagittal, it's side on. You look at the sagittal plane, okay? Now, more often than not, if you're looking at the, the, the picture from side on, the movements that it's going to be asking for are going to be movements that occur around the transverse axis, which all of those movements do occur. 
Okay, so if you put that um, axis going through the body from the one side of the, the left side of the body to the right side of the body, at the hip you're looking at hip flexion, at the knee you're looking at knee flexion, at the ankle you're looking at plantar flexion um, and uh, dorsiflexion, and at the shoulder you're looking at um, flexion extension, and the elbow you're looking at flexion extension. So there's loads of different movements there if you're looking at the sagittal plane and the transverse axis. All right. Um, if you're having a look at so another one, the, the same uh, example for that was the first one. So that is the gymnast. It's a sagittal plane and transverse axis. Okay. Um, let's have a look at the next one. Frontal plane, sagittal axis. Okay. Frontal plane, sagittal axis would be um, the, the cartwheel. Okay. That's the frontal plane. Okay, because you're looking at, I know it's weird because it's upside down, but at the end of the day, you're still looking at her front on. And the sagittal axis is, um, it is, it's the axis that goes from the front of the body to the back of the body. So you're looking at things there like leg abduction, okay, um, that's the main thing you're really looking at there. Leg abduction, adduction, uh, uh, shoulder abduction, adduction, okay. So that's frontal and sagittal. don't know if there was another example in that assessment that we did. No. Um, you then have transverse, okay, which is from the top. Now, the only one that we had a look at, which was from the top, was that one. Okay, so the plane you were looking at was from the top, okay, so that's above, all right, so a transverse top, all right, that's the plane. The, the axis is longitudinal because it's going down, if, if for this discus thrower, it's going down from the head to the toes and they're rotating around the axis. It's rotation going on, all right. Now, the trick questions are going to come up. For example, this one. Okay, you've got the hurdler, all right? And it says, what's the uh, plane and what's the axis? Now, the plane that you're looking at is front on there, isn't it? It's a picture taken from front on. So it's a frontal plane, but the movement occurring there, okay? The only way you can look at the movement occurring there, which is hip flexion. Okay, so she's raised the leg up. You've got hip flexion. You can't look at hip flexion from front on. So it's looking at the, <coughs> it's hard to draw that, but the, the, it's a front on picture, but the, the movement is hip flexion. So hip flexion occurs around the transverse axis. It doesn't occur around the frontal axis. Okay, it's the transverse axis. All right, just as if you were looking at it from so if you were looking at the hurdler from there, they're getting their leg over that hurdle, right? You're looking at that hip flexion there, that hip flexion. So the plane that we were looking at was frontal because it's taken from the front, but the movement is occurring around the sagittal, uh, sorry, the transverse axis, the transverse axis, okay? best way to remember it is, I suppose, just think of what movement are you looking at there, okay? A hurdler, you're having to look at flexion of the, the hip, okay? Because they're having to get their leg over the, the hurdle. Flexion of the hip, definitely, you should know, occurs across the sagittal axis, okay? Uh, another trick question there was here was um, this ice skater, okay? Rotating around, spinning around. Now, a lot of you put frontal plane, and I've kind of given you the benefit of the doubt for that. But really, the plane, because it can't be frontal if they're rotating, because that might be sagittal at some point, and then frontal at some other point. So I would put the, the plane for looking at rotation, okay, is you've got the transverse plane, and it would be the longitudinal axis, okay? Right. So we've gone through definitions. You need to, in your, um, your uh, revision card, on one piece of A4, write down all the definitions of the planes and the axes. Then I want you to actually draw a copy this, copy that there, and then I want you to actually sort of think of some examples. All right? And then you, you'll be all set and ready to go for your assessment. Now, there was a couple of other things that we um, I need to cover, and that is um, circumduction. The movement circumduction is that. That's circumduction. Now, the definition of circumduction I've said already is, is a circular movement around a joint. However, it is actually, um, it is a mixture of four different movements. 
extension at the shoulder, abduction, okay? And then as it comes round, it's flexion and adduction. So there's flexion, extension, and then abduction, adduction. All those four movements are actually occurring when you have circumduction. There's flexion, abduction, sorry, extension, abduction, adduction, flexion. Okay? I know that sounds complicated, but it's four movements for circumduction. Okay? Uh, now, circumduction happens with bowling. Uh, circumduction, that's generally, that's the, the most, that's the most common one. Oh, swimming, circumduction. So butterfly or, you know, things like um, front crawl, that's all circumduction. Uh, and then the difference between circumduction and rotation. Rotation <coughs> is just that. Okay, rotation is, is the rotation along a longitudinal, that would be a longitudinal axis. Okay, and the rotation is movement around that longitudinal axis. That's rotation. That's rotation. Okay, but rotation at the shoulder would be that. And that happens a lot, like if you throw a ball, okay, as you release the ball, that happens. That, you might not realize it, but you have rotation that happens as you throw a ball, okay? Or as you bowl a ball, your arm comes through and then it rotates inward slightly. So that would be rotation. Right, I think I've covered everything. Um, Make sure you watch these two videos. You, you make those two um, uh, revision cards, okay? So you've only got two pieces of A4 with all that information to put on. And then I'm gonna do a quick quiz, uh, multiple choice, and then we're gonna finish off with an assessment, uh, 27 mark assessment. Okay, hope you're all well. Cheers, bye.